Plastics are versatile, long-living, hard-wearing, and tough. When you look around today, you see what the future of plastics were. Plastics have all these great properties. What I want to ask, though, is what is next? Can we turn these plastics into ultra-smart materials? We already see their potential. Look at this sailing boat. They use plastics to produce sails that are ultra-tough and ultra-strong, yet ultra-light. We can use plastics to conduct electricity for the future in plastic electronics and bioelectronics. Though it's not about only individual plastics, even a bottle like that combines many plastics into layers. By layers, we can produce and design new materials with specific functions, smart plastic with new properties. So what could we do with such new plastics? What if we had a plastic that can control the flow of light? What, can we, what if we could combine that with our ability to shape plastics into complex shapes to produce new products. That's the challenge that motivates me in my lab at Imperial College London. The potential is enormous. Imagine a computer with a plastic chip that processes light and not electricity. Such a chip could be of low cost and could use less resources to be produced. We could combine these plastic chips for entirely new uh, things. But how can we get and build such a plastic-like computer? We need new versatile materials platforms. We need to bend light as this prism, and plastics are not very good at that. How can we produce a plastic that can control the flow of light? In my laboratory, we simply blended various materials together to produce a new hybrid plastic. The raw materials are easily sourced, they are inexpensive and well-known. Think of white paint or plastic glue. When we combine key ingredients of these simple products at the end together, we can produce a plastic that can bend light like you wouldn't believe. And it doesn't only bend light, it is actually, it doesn't absorb and it doesn't scatter. So the material is fully transparent. And when you start to stack these materials into layers, new things happen. For instance, we can make a transparent mirror. In, I know this is a paradox. A transparent mirror transmits visible light, but it reflects the infrared. That is heat with perfect precision. Imagine how much energy we waste to uh, heat our buildings uh, and to keep the buildings at the temperature we want. With these plastics, we can produce coatings that keep heat in, like we need in Davos, or heat out, like in such a greenhouse. It would save so much energy as we don't need to cool so much. But we can even do better. It's not only infrared. We can reflect any wavelengths of light as we want. And when we start to build these stacks, not only in one dimension, but going to two dimensions and three dimensions, new opportunities arise. For instance, nowadays we have fiber optics to transmit light for telecommunication. But what about having a new lightweight, large area plastic that can plumb light and heat like we plumb nowadays water across our buildings? 2015 was a great year for light computing. But to produce such a light-based chip, we need new processes that can scale up. With molecular hybrids, we can mix and match and tune the properties of our plastics, but even with other materials, and still get materials that can easily be processed. Think how easy it is to produce a plastic bottle. What if we could do that with a plastic chip? We know now, since the 50s, how we manufacturing plastics at a scale. We know now how to mix polymers together to get the functions we want. So knowing this, if what could we now ask us? What type of intriguing questions come up? If we could do a plastic chip, what else could we do for architecture, medicine, agriculture? Clearly, we can see a future where we can further exploit material science to design a new generation of smart plastics. However, my question is, what do we, how can we safeguard our raw materials to produce those plastics? Ah, thank you.